It has been described as a book that breaks your heart and then puts it back together. Lindsay Wong grew up in a family where mental illness was seen as something brought on by ghosts and demons, leading to terrifying consequences for Lindsay and her siblings. And it is all laid out in her brutally honest and funny memoir, The Woo Woo, How I Survived, Ice Hockey, Drug Raids, Demons, and my crazy Chinese family. Lindsay is our guest in studio this morning. Good to have you here. Hi, thanks so much for having me. All right, first of all, tell us who is the woo-woo? So the woo-woo in my family refers specifically to Chinese ghosts. Um, there's no name for mental illness in my family, so my family started blaming ghosts by calling it woo-woo, right? These ghosts make that sound. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Now, how did that translate into experiences in your childhood? There were fears about ghosts being present, and it led you on... Some directions that maybe as a kid at first you didn't understand and then as an adult probably thought, yeah, this is, this is sure. out of the norm. Yeah, so the woo-woo um, growing up, um, my family thought ghosts were always chasing us. So they would take us to the food court at the mall or we'd go to Walmart because they thought ghosts would somehow you know, be attracted to food. And so it led to a lot of really funny looking, funny experiences looking back, but also a lot of scary and terrifying things as a child. As you got older, you realized that this was more about mental illness yes. and in your mom's behavior. For sure, yeah. Looking back now, because we don't have a word for mental illness in um, Chinese culture or Chinese language, um, for me, I thought it was the supernatural's fault. But as I moved through the world as an adult, I can now be like, this is depression, this is caused by anxiety. In the Asian community, and you outline this in your book so well, that there is a real um, rejection of yep. mental illness uh, as anything that is, uh, that is anything that can be cured or helped right. because it is, it's not something wrong with the person. It's easier to subscribe supernatural beliefs to it. Yeah, I think in um, Chinese culture, we definitely have a language or barrier of this idea of shame and secrecy. It's a real taboo to say, I have mental illness, I have depression, or I have anxiety. And I think I'm hoping the woo-woo will be able to address these topics. Your family has a strong sense of family pride. Have they read this book? They have not read the book. Um, my dad made fun of my advance, actually, when I told him it was going to be published. Um, and What did he say? He was just like, that's it. And he kind of just walked away. Um, but I have it on good authority that my um, brother told me that my parents have it on hold at the library. They don't want to pay for it, though. Okay. <laughs> uh, your book also faced a lot of rejection from publishers yes. initially. What was some of the feedback you got? Why do you think that was? Um, a lot of publishers were saying it was too niche, it was too weird. Um, and it was not universal enough, but mental illness is something that affects all families, right? This is a story of immigration, it's a personal experience, but it also relates, I think, to a lot of Canadians. Have you had any feedback from the Asian community, people saying, I'm so glad somebody is putting this out there, putting it into writing? Yes, I had an older Asian lady come up to me and she thanked me and said I was really brave for talking about a subject that Asians generally don't address or even acknowledge. Right, the woo-woo is about what happens when mental illness is undiagnosed right, and untreated for many generations. There are parts of the world that have really embraced uh, combating mental illness. I look to the UK, for example. Here in Canada, we've mm -hmm. made great strides. What is it about mental illness uh, that is still seen as taboo in some Asian communities? I think it's because it's such an invisible illness. Um, it's something that we can't really put our finger on. We can't see it. So in Asian cultures, because it's something that's invisible, it's thought that someone should be able to fight through it, right? It's considered, you know, a personal weakness. Some of the experiences that were scary as a child, but they, again, were being carried out by your parents, people that you trust you may not have yeah. seen as regular at the mm -hmm. time, and definitely when you look at it through eyes of the adult, are terrifying. Tell the story about your dad letting your foot on fire. Oh, so um, my mother, actually, oh, we, were, we were camping, and she um, had gotten really angry, um, and she had grabbed a lighter, um, she didn't really light it on a fire. She just sort of chased me with it um, to get me out of bed. And so now looking back, I can sort of see that that was something she did because she didn't know how to express her, her own rage. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as a child, you're kind of like, oh, this is something, this is scary. But now looking back as an adult, I, I, um, it's something that it's, it's like, mom, why did you do that? It's a fascinating book, both yeah. from a cultural perspective and from a scientific perspective as well, taking a look into mental illness. Lindsay, thanks for being here this Thank morning. Thank you so much for having me.